Assalamu alaikum and peace. This is Bilal Abdullah, your host of Black and Muslim in America. Muslim and Black in America, however you want to call it. Back again with another broadcast. This is what I love to do. Love to share my thoughts. Whatever's on my mind, whatever little knowledge, you know, Allah has given me, I like to share it with the people. And hopefully this channel will grow, God willing. We're going to keep pushing. We're going to keep moving. I'm going to keep giving content. But obesity is a problem in America. In fact, in 2015 and 2016, it was said that 40% of American adults were overweight or obese. And to me, this is by design. This is by design because... In one aspect, I believe these uh, people who are at the top of society, who are the upper upper echelon of, of wealth, the top 1%, they really want to have population control. And, you know, there's a whole theory that they want to get the population down to a certain number. And I see that obesity is another way for them to get this done. There's many other ways they get this done as well through drug epidemics, you know, tobacco, whether it be opioid, all types of other crap, uh, the jail, the, the, the people dying in jail, the jail epidemic, people committing suicide. It's all type of ways they want to control the population and get those numbers down. Diseases with this whole coronavirus popping off. So I see obesity as, as, an, as, an, as another design of the power structure to control society. So I see this as by design as well because even when they're trying to control the population, they know that obesity is a big business. So they're going to promote that. According to the CDC, the estimated annual medical cost of obesity in the United States was $147 billion, and that was in 2008. The medical cost for people who have obesity was about $1,400 higher than those of normal weight. So we, we can see that Obesity is big business because it's going to cause other health issues. You're going to have to constantly go to the doctor. You're going to have to constantly get medication. So it's going to keep the pharmaceutical industry booming. It's going to keep the doctor industry booming. And then you'll just die and it'll help control the population. Therefore, obesity is big business in America which is why they promote this whole body positivity stuff. It's really ridiculous. It's, it's more of the thelima of do whatever thou wilt. This is more of the Satanism being pushed on society. Eat however you want, live, drink, and be merry. And this is why you have people like Lizzo being promoted and I know you all just saw recently they had some ghastly pictures of her dropping on the beach with with a red outfit you know I lower my gaze after I got my first look and it was not a good look anyway it didn't turn me on it was basically I'm not gonna go in but you know what it is it was basically a refrigerator with lingerie on. And she does this constantly. She does these type of things constantly. And it's just, just to get people talking. And she loves to brag about how she does all these performances, which takes so much energy to do. But this is my whole thing. This is how I know this is nothing but promotion for her. And she's promoting being obese. She's promoting bad health. She's promoting mammyism. 
the reason I assume this is because if you're on stage two hours dang near every day, dancing, singing, running up and down, gyrating, gyrating your mattress back, then you're going to eventually burn enough calories to lose weight if you're doing this day in and day out on a regular basis. So that lets me know that you're purposely eating a surplus of calories so that you will remain obese, so that you will be able to play on you being a big woman. This is what you're doing. So it lets me know that this is an agenda. This is a propaganda. But notice they mostly push that on the women, specifically black women. According to the CDC, almost 80% of black women are either overweight and or obese. So the propaganda is obviously working. But it's more to it than that. And look, I don't want to hear that, that stupid stuff y'all say. Uh, well, overweight and obese are by white people's standards and blah, blah, blah. Because if you look in the mirror for yourself or you gather up 10 of your friends, you will see the proof right before your very eyes. All that European standard stuff, whatever. Because the reality is staring you in your face. Obesity amongst white women isn't promoted to them as much as it is to black women. And what do you see? You see that obesity amongst white women is a little bit lower. To, you know, in the general population of them, being an obese white woman, that's, that's relationship suicide. They know a man will not really want them unless it's some trailer park man. They know no man would not really want them. And so they fight to not become obese to the point that many will become bulimic and throw up food. They will go to extremes to not become obese. They'll become anorexic. Propaganda is one reason, but also the code of their men is another. White men in general are not accepting of obesity from their women. We black men, on the other hand, accept whatever. And here, I don't want to also hear you're using white people as a standard. I'm using health as a standard and showing that some things they are correct about. Not everything, but some things. This is something we are incorrect about. Black men as a whole, in general, we accept whatever. But I see that many of us are getting on code and we're stepping up our lives. So many of these codes are trickled down to us from, you know, many of these bad codes that we used to have that we're working on getting rid of. They were trickled down to us from white supremacy. For example, when your wealth and economy is up and strong amongst your people, you are less likely to accept obesity in general. Your quality of standards and discipline are raised and that is why. So you have the white folk who have gotten their wealth, power and influence off the backs of black people. Because of all this wealth they have and continue to accumulate, they will not be accepting as much of obese women because they don't have to be. Whereas with us, that code doesn't stand as much because we do not have an economic power base. Many of us don't even have enough money or wealth. And even when being broke, you can have a ruling class mindset that will push you to change your position in life. But even though, like I said, many of us are waking up and getting on point, many of our people don't mind being broke. They don't mind just getting by. They don't mind getting that paycheck on Thursday or Friday, getting a nice dubby dub 
of some of some tree getting a nice eighth smoking it up all the weekend going to the club wasting it on liquor and wasting it on escape from the reality of their brokenness wasting it on escape from having to go to a job they hate and they're just fine with just having enough to party and get high and escape and enough to pay their bills and then they'll do it again next week therefore a code for ourselves and our women usually doesn't stand but as i said we're we're working on this and it's becoming stronger and that's a good thing but most of our black males are just looking for easy sexual access and therefore they help in the propaganda of our women being obese they know that if they begin to hold a standard for our women of dietary and physical discipline and health discipline that would mean they would have to also get up off their asses as well to earn more money why because once a woman disciplines herself to the point where she has lost a hundred pounds 70 pounds 40 pounds and she looks in the mirror she doesn't have to lie to herself anymore she doesn't have to do that whole body positivity lizzo mattress refrigerator back lies to herself it's right in front of her the proof of her body actual real life body positivity is right in front of her because if you had real body positivity you would be positive to yourself and not negative and you would do something about your health and weight so she has this proof right in front of her and especially if she was already a pretty woman in the face and now she has developed the body to match with all her hard work and she realizes all this hard work she has put in and then she looks over at you sitting on the couch playing PS4 every day and barely going to work and living off her check. You think she gonna be stuck with broke boy Bobby? Nah, that hypergamy really gonna start hitting hard. So there is no incentive for black males to have such standards when white supremacy tries to have us, to tr tries to have an economic foot on our necks their resolve instead of getting their game up getting their money up their resolve is just to accept the foot on the neck stay laying down and to say hey baby i loves me a big woman you not fat you just stick now let me let me get some of that check and let me get some of that sex too do black men love black women yes we do but sometimes our love can be some can become so extreme that it gets to the point of enabling bad health behaviors and this is a problem so when such propaganda is pushed on black women and for black men to accept it it will also affect our muslim black community as well and you can see this and it's a chick uh sister out here her name is leah vernon and she, she's someone who is somewhat being pushed on the black Muslim community in a similar way as Lizzo is. She's on a book tour. She has a book that came out. It's called Fat, Black, and Muslim. Notice the order of these words here. She sees herself as fat first. She's one of these alleged body posy people who are loud and unashamed. In the synopsis of her book, it says she sees her obesity as a sense of rebellion. My question is a rebellion to what? A rebellion to good health? And again, I don't wanna hear the ignorant people in the back saying, Oh, you could be obese and healthy. Just stop it. I'm not even going to waste my time with your stupidity. If you can't deal with reality, I can't help you or even have a discussion with you. A rebellion to what, though? I'll tell you what it is. It is in rebellion to herself 
and what she knows she should be doing. And it is a rebellion to men who have money, who have means, the men that women really want is it is in rebellion to that and it is in rebellion to those men of standards it's re, it's in rebellion to their standards and saying no you will take me damn it so you'll notice if you look up many of her videos she is a staunch feminist she wants to force on you that you have to love her back you have to love her roles and I already did a video on my page that told you how feminism is not conducive to a proper black Islamic household. It is just white supremacy in a skirt. And sure enough, this sister says her favorite type of man is a zaddy. She had a video on her page where she was telling other big girls to go look up video of handsome, well-built men who love big women. And even herself, she knows this is kind of not making sense because then she's all in the video questioning. Well, I wonder if it's just a fetish though. But nonetheless, she gets lost in the fantasy of well-built men wanting her sexually. And she wants you to get lost in that. But nine times out of 10, in such situations, it's either a fetish, it's either a fetish for them, or their money's low, or they have some form of low self-esteem. It just is what it is. You have to understand that white supremacy sees even the black female as a threat to its survival on the planet. If you have read the ISIS papers in the chapter entitled The Original Mother Effer, she explains how and why white supremacist males feel the need to degrade the black woman. Even when seemingly propping her up like they do Lizzo, it is still in mockery and degradation because this is just their mammy that they see. And so they do not see her too much as a threat because she has been neutralized to a degree. She is super obese, so she possibly cannot have children. And if she does, she may lose it or the child will have birth defects or may lose her own life in the process. Or even before a child, her obesity will cause her health issues so that she will not be that much of a threat to them as well. So the white supremacist male always feel the need to degrade the black woman. Not only do they degrade our women, they degrade their own as well. This type of stuff goes on, as I said, is because we as men are not on code with ourselves or the standard we want from our women. Amongst black men, there is a problem with obesity as well. Although not as much as women, you have to look at yourself first, black man, and say, well, damn, how I want my woman to be on point and I'm not on point. That's the first step to getting our health as a society, as a whole on point. The men have to get on point first so that we can be the standard bearers and standard holders and enforcers in our homes and community and society. We must strive as men, as a community and society to build our economic power as well so that we have the financial support to demand higher standards of living for ourselves first and our women. The only way this can be can, can come about is that we as a people must want better for ourselves. It has to start in the mind first. Obesity is prevalent amongst our people, as I said, and this is really just a sign of giving up. It's letting the white supremacists know, look, okay, you got us, all right? I'm just gonna eat as much as I can. I'm, I give up. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of trying to fight. I give up. It's a sign of lack of discipline. It's a sign of lack of focus a sign of laziness all of these things must be burnt out of you to progress as a muslim for me 
one of the best ways to overcome such things is with the Salah. As Allah says in the Quran in chapter 29 verse 45, that the Salah keeps you away from the immoral sins and from wicked deeds. Gluttony, laziness, procrastination, these are all forms of wicked deeds that lead to obesity and the Salah will begin to build your discipline. Since you have to be, you know, you have to be on time for each Salah, you will learn to not procrastinate. You will learn to not be lazy. In fact, the Prophet even gave us a supplication to say to, to Allah, to ask Allah to protect us from laziness. You should look that up. Also, Salah builds your inner willpower to overcome evil deeds and issues within yourself. Imam Ahmad recorded that Abu Huraira said, a man came to the prophet and said, so-and-so prays at night, meaning he wakes up after the obligatory prayers and he does extra prayers in the middle of the night. And so the man said, but when he, when the morning comes, he goes out and steals. The prophet basically replied to him, if what you are saying is true, that he sincerely wakes up at night after the obligatory prayers and even, you know, in praising at night. If what you're saying is true, then eventually the Salah will stop him from doing that. It will build his, now, now that's the end of the Hadith. It will build his willpower to stop doing that. What this is showing is that when you are sincere in your Salah and you can also add extra sal Salah, this over time builds your willpower. And I have experienced this myself. I'll be committing certain sins and having certain shortcomings. And I notice the more I pray to Hajjud or extra Salah or even more Dhikr, remembrance of Allah. I notice that overcoming these sins becomes easier and easier. It's only when I fall off and get lazy in doing such acts that I start falling off in my sins and deeds. So this is a building block for you. But not only that, just get up and do it. Now that you have come to Allah, now that you now that you have asked Allah to strengthen you and to take away laziness from you, now you have to tie your own camel and put the work in. You can't afford a gym membership, no excuse. Work out at home. You have to start somewhere. And, you know, I have to say this. I noticed amongst Muslims, the black Muslims in general, because this is who I'm speaking to, the men are out of shape and they have big guts and the women are even more bigger. This isn't something praiseworthy or good. And it shows that we still have shortcomings in our deen. Well, I know my father, he's fat, but he prays all his a lot. He isn't always sinning. So what are you talking about? Ugh. Look, this dean isn't just about the next life. This dean is also about this life. And the prophet, prophet taught us moderation in our eating habits. We all know the famous hadith. Ibn Umar reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the believer eats with seven intestines and the believer eats with one intestine. This is in Bukhari and Muslim. And what does Allah say in the Quran about those who do not believe? He says they eat as the cattle eat. So no wonder you have such obesity in America. But even <clears throat> even sadder on a side note, because many of y'all, many of people like to have this worship in their minds of KSA. In many of those areas in KSA, the obesity rate is high too. This shows us that we are lacking in Dean. Why does it show this? How does it show this? Because it shows that we are following behind the non-Muslims, the non-believers. We want to constantly eat to our fill and then, and then add some more on the regular. You know, if you want to eat to your fill on celebrations and stuff, okay. But we want to do this every single day. So instead of eating moderately, we want to eat like cows. The prophet told us we would imitate the non-Muslims, especially the Christians and the Jews, 
even if they went into a lizard hole, we would follow them. So just like the majority of America, America is obese, you see the same with us. We supposed to be the example and shining light for humanity. As Allah says in the Quran, you are the best of creation ever raised up because you enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong and you believe in Allah. No one is going to take you serious when you're trying to tell them about a wrong and your gut is hanging and banging. They're going to look at you and say or think, man, you don't even have discipline to control your own eating, but you're trying to tell me something. It's the same amongst ourselves. You up on the mimbar and you belching because you done ate too much and your stomach is hanging and banging and you're trying to enjoy the good and forbid the wrong on the people. Well, it starts with yourself first. Umar Al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, would encourage exercise and he didn't like obesity. In fact, he was against obesity. He said once, oh people, beware of overeating because it makes you lazy in your prayer. It makes your body weak and makes you unhealthy. And Allah dislikes the obese man. And you should be modest in your food because that is closer to righteousness and further from excess and makes you stronger in worshiping Allah. And you will perish when your desire becomes more dear to you than Allah or your religion. But the prophet also told us in regard to eating with this one intestine or this one stomach that the prophet said in the hadith that the son of Adam cannot fill a vessel more worse than his stomach as it is as it is enough for him to take a few bites to straighten his back. If he cannot do that, then he may fill it with a third of his food, a third for his drink and a third for his breath. The first sentence in this shows you that you should not be constantly eating to your fill, which is one of the main causes of obesity. Filling your stomach to its fill is one of the worst things you can do, is what the prophet said. Then he taught basically that all you need to do is eat enough to keep you going throughout the day. Allah tells us in the Quran that we are the moderate nation. We're not to the extreme on either end like the Christians or Jews. The Christians go to go to the extreme in praising Jesus to the point where he became a God or a son of God and Jews go to the extreme on the other side and they revile the prophets and they curse the prophets. So we are to be between. We see Jesus as a mighty prophet, but we also see him as just a human and not the son of God or even God. And we don't curse the prophets or place purposeful major sins on them. We are to be the same, not only in our religion, but in our health as well. We shouldn't be super skinny to the point of anorexia and we shouldn't be overweight or obese either. See, a lot of these sisters, some are housewives and this is a blessed position. But these women make it a curse upon themselves because many are not pleased with it. And instead of spending their time making their homes clean, full of love, the smells of good food and raising children, they may do things, they may do these things, but also since they are not fully pleased with staying at home, or even if they are, they use food as a form of escape, whether it be from escape from the boredom or escape from whatever. So they are around the house all day eating for no reason. This is the same with women and men who work outside the home, at the office or anywhere. They find themselves constantly eating and snacking just to pass the time or just to feel good. There's no need for that, especially, especially if you are at home or you have, you know, a, a nice chill office job. The first part of the Hadith where you just eat enough to keep you going applies more to you and if you have a more strenuous job then you eat what you need more you know you eat more than that but even then you don't overfill yourself and you always want to leave space to be able to breathe and move around comfortably and that's where the last part comes in 
The prophet also said in an authentic hadith in Ibn Majah that verily the people who ate to their fill most in this world will be the hungriest on the day of resurrection. So the answer and solution to these issues, one is good dietary education. That's one of the main things. You have to understand basically how to eat to live. And, you know, even though the uh, Nation of Islam isn't Orthodox Islam and, and the Islam they teach isn't the true Islam, one thing that they did teach is proper eating habits. You know, Elijah Muhammad wrote a book about how to eat to live, and he wrote good dietary things in that book. Some things, you know, I don't agree with, some things I do, but overall, they taught their people they taught the people, the black man and black woman, how to properly eat to live. This is something we as Muslims have to do ourselves. You have to learn how to eat well. Many times people come here from different countries and people even living here and they don't know how to eat properly. And you have the whole world at your fingertips. You have a smartphone in your hand so there's no excuse for you not to be looking up proper eating habits, proper portions, proper meals, all of these things. You know, did you know the first trials of the Muslims after the prophet passed away was the trial of prosperity? Urwa reported that Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, Verily the first trial to occur in this nation after the passing of his prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was the people eating to their fill. For when people fear their stomachs, their bodies are fattened, their hearts are hardened, and their desires are uncontrollable. The source of this is uh, Al-Juli ibn Abidunya. So, this is one of the first trials of the Muslims. They was getting money, and they was, they was living it up and eating, eating to their fill every day. So again, even Aisha states that this is an issue. You have to control your dietary. And there's another hadith where the prophet says, whoever can guarantee the chastity of what is between his two jawbones and what is between his two legs, I guarantee paradise for him. This is in Bukhari. So, you know, we understand that the two jawbones, we understand that that means speaking good words and not speaking bad words but also you can look at it the same way within your dietary you have to control how you eat because obesity keeps you from worships and ma it makes you lazy in worship so you're putting your hereafter in jeopardy so you can use that hadith in that way as well the prophet taught us as well many good things to eat you can look these things up yourself as well on google like i said you have a smartphone look these things up and a lot of times many people don't know especially when they come here from different countries and even people who live here they don't know that everything in america pretty much has sugar in it and that's a lot of times what causes people to become overweight and to have problems with their health get all these diabetes and stuff because everything has sugar in it did you know the average amount of processed sugar for a male is only supposed to be 40 grams a day the average amount of sugar for a female of processed sugar is only supposed to be 30 grams a day think about that if you drink a can of soda you already done passed your limit think about that and you have people out here who drink sodas day in and day out. I remember before I used to, back in the day, oh my God. I used to drink two 30 ounce cups of Dr. Pepper dang near every day. When I used to work at the airport, I used to drink uh, McDonald's sweet teas every day two of them, two 30 ounce bottles. I get one when I come into work, and then when I'm leaving from work, I get another one. Then that wouldn't even count in food. So think about all the sugar I was putting in my body. It got to a point to where I would start getting rashes on my stomach because I was drinking so much sugar. So 
the amount of sugar in our foods and drinks in America is a problem. That's something you also have to control. But that also comes with good dietary education. Like I said, half the battle is a good diet. That's half the battle. The other half is regular exercise. Exercise, And, and we really have no excuse for us not to exercise. You know, you got gyms here, Planet Fitness, $10 a month. If you can't afford that, then okay. Maybe you have major bills in your life. Okay. I don't see how you couldn't afford that, but okay. You still have no excuse because you can work out at home. You can wake up in the morning, do some push-ups, do some sit-ups, run in place, do some pull-ups. You could do all these things. Do some do some uh squat thrusts, do some lunges to get your legs right. You can do all these things at home. You have the world at your fingertips, like I said. You can look up on YouTube and look up home workouts. And you can have a different home workout for every day. So there's no excuse for you not to at least be getting 30 to 45 minutes of exercise in your life. Even if you're okay, I, I still don't have time at home to work out. Okay, well, when you go to the office at your job, you can find out ways to work out too. Walking up the steps, run up the steps, run up and down the steps while you're at work. There's so many different ways you can work out and exercise. So you really have no excuse. And then on top of that, we as the men of our community, especially black men, we are supposed to be building our warrior spirit. And not just in spirit, but in physical as well. And that is having a strong, healthy body. Exercise plays a big role in this. How you think the companions was doing all these battles? You think they was fat and flabby and sitting around all day and drinking sugary drinks and eating to their fill? No. The prophet told us that the strong believer is better than the weak believer. So which one do you want to be? Military life was the life of the Sahaba, of the companions. It wasn't a chilling around life. And, you know, one time Umar sent a letter to the soldiers of Azerbaijan who he thought maybe were getting comfy in their lives. Imam al-Bukhari narrated from Abu Usman al-Nahdi, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, the message of Umar al-Qatab, may Allah be pleased with him, has come to us. And we were with Utbah bin Farqad and we were conducting fighting in Azerbaijan. And in the letter of writing, Umar al-Khattab wrote, Wear the izar, wear the sandals, wear the outer wrapping garment, and throw away the shoes and long trousers. Wear the clothing of your father Ismail, shun luxury living, and wear the clothes of the people. Bask in the sun because it is a, it is a warm water bath of the Arabs. Have a rough lifestyle, have a shabby look, walk barefoot do not get into the habit of constantly riding so he's talking about training for long distance walking and marching play with the horse with agility jump on the horse while it is running practice target shooting and walk fast between the two from the firing position to the firing target so here we see the importance of training and being physically fit you know, when they were out in battle, he was telling them, don't be trying to get all comf comfy and look cute. You know, that's not the time for that. When you get off the battlefield, then you can, you know, make yourself dress up and look nice. But right now, when you on a battlefield and you trying to train, no, keep it dusty, keep it rugged, you know, keep it, keep it strong. Be a warrior out here and train yourself. That's what he's telling you. So here we see the important importance of exercise and training. You see these white supremacists out here. They are all training. They train themselves and they train their children. A child, a male white child in America, of a, they know how to use a gun before they know how to even use their own private parts. While we're here no, teaching our son how to gyrate at parties because we want them to be sexually active. Like, we're teaching them how to use their private part gun before an actual gun. But these white supremacists out here teaching their children how to shoot guns. They're training. Not only are they training with weapons and guns and knives, but they also training with their bodies. 
they taking up martial arts and at the least they getting their bodies on point and what are you doing black muslim what are you doing you look around the whole world and you know even to those immigrants who listen and even in your home countries you see around the whole world the white supremacist and the white supremacist hand and what is doing in your country and even here in America yet you're sitting around and not training yourself to defend yourself you, you're not going to be able to run your whole life and for two anything can happen anywhere you see how these white supremacists are just walking into government buildings with weapons attacking black women randomly attacking men randomly you being overweight and fat, you are just a sitting, soft, mushy, marshmallow target. You supposed to be making yourself a hard target. When when they look at you, they should be thinking twice like, hmm, should I? Nah, I, I don't think I should. One day, Umar al khattab was in the market and he saw a man with a big stomach. And Umar asked this man, what's this? Pointing to his stomach. And the man replied to him, it's a blessing. Umar al Qatar replied back that indeed it is a curse. So think about what you're doing, people. And, you know, I'll, I'll leave you all with this last hadith from the Prophet in Tirmidhi. The Prophet said, the one who is physically healthy, safe in his community and sufficiently nurtured will possess the whole world. I'll leave you all with that. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Hit that notification bell as well. Again, thank you for listening. This has been Black and Muslim in America, or Muslim and Black in America, however you want to call it. This is Bilal Abdullah signing out. Peace and assalamu alaikum.